From the Fox Studios in downtown Panama City, it's News View with Lee Sullivan. Let's talk about your endangered freedoms. News and views with an attitude. Good evening, this News View. I'm Lee Sullivan. Thank you for allowing me and have the opportunity and pleasure to visit with Ron Hart once again down to Rosemary Beach to make sure Northwest Florida is uh, still the cradle of libertarian thought. He is a columnist and an author. If you haven't got it, you really need to. No such thing as a pretty good alligator wrestler. It will cause you to smile. You will enjoy it. And it is, from time to time, more insightful than you would want it to be. So, uh, welcome back, Thank Cotter. Thank you. Appreciate Good it. Good to have you. Good yeah. to have you. Uh, so, how was the 4th at Rosemary? Did y'all have fireworks oh, or pina coladas or what, what went on over there? It's my favorite holiday. There's no... You know, no services to go to, no presents to get, just, uh, you know. Really? <laughs> Good point. I hadn't thought about holiday. that. You know, having to get a 4th of July present. No pressure there. <laughs> and uh, what could go wrong? Then you got alcohol combined with explosives. All right. So that's the terrific right. combination. A true American holiday. Exactly. I, I loved like it. it. No, we had a good time. We had the family, and uh, we've 25 years we've been coming down here with these other couples from Memphis, and our kids are growing up. They're bringing boyfriends and girlfriends, and we're in that dynamic stage right now where you're kind of, Kind of doing that, but um, dynamic you know. stage. I like that. I'm yeah. going to use that. We, <laughs> we come down here for the uh, Fourth uh, of July. Better than Atlanta. The explosives go off in Atlanta. You know, uh, fireworks go off in Atlanta. They draw return gunfire. <laughs> so at least down here, people are calm. <laughs> they know it's they know it's the Fourth of July. <laughs> Atlanta, you can, uh, it can cause war. Atlanta, just I mean. They, uh, what is it? Their personalities, their psyche. What is it about that? Is it just big city stuff? I think it grew too fast. You know, I mean, I like it there, fine. I mean, I split my time between three cities. But you know, Atlanta grew very fast in the '70s and '80s. It wasn't quite ready for it. The government's not quite uh, practical and sensible. They tax one part of town, Buckhead, uh, and it's uh, traffic's awful. So it's right. not it's not as, as good a quality of life as it used to be. It's uh, the the, the government the uh, the new mayor's better than the ones in the past. But you know, I like North West Florida. I like uh, good, I like Tennessee good. better. Uh, we had a little uh, optimism in uh, the column uh, this yeah. week. Yeah. Uh, I was uh, aghast, as it were. <laughs> <laughs> well, you try to find a silver lining in all of this, huh? No, I just I said that some people see the glass half empty, some see it half full. I see it as an opportunity to pour bourbon in it. <laughs> That's kind of my view of the half empty, half uh, full situation. Now, yeah, Obama's so bad, and I try to make the point in the column, he's so bad that he'll probably be a one-term president. You know, even Rosalind, Rosalind Carter's starting to compare him to Jimmy Carter. I mean, he, he's, he's running into the same problems that uh, you know, the Carter had. He's got a problem in Iran. He's got the uh, energy oil crisis. He's, he's proven to be over his head. Uh, you know, as a community organizer, I think it comes, t turns out the president is a little harder than community organizer. Yes, and uh, I think it's starting to become very clear to a lot of people. So he should be a one-term president. Hopefully he'll be, you know, remind us why every eight to 12 years we flirt with a Democrat or liberal policies and why they don't work. Okay. Hopefully. Speaking of uh, <laughs> liberal policies, uh, the svelte one, Al Gore, yeah. he gets a, a masseuse uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, and, it, and, it, and, and, it, and one is led to believe that he might have been uh, getting yeah. under the blanket with yeah. uh, Seinfeld's guy. Well, huh? you know, the masseuse was only searching for his lot box. He was global warming, warming <laughs> trying, to, trying to put his carbon <laughs> footprint on her. No, this guy is a, <laughs> guy is a renowned creep. <laughs> Yeah. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> now, Gore, Gore is represent. I've written about Gore for guys. I've been writing seven years. I've probably written six negative col columns about Gore and Edwards. I mean, he's awful. I mean, he's absolutely awful. And the reason she didn't come forward in Portland is our liberal friend said, oh, you're going to hurt the global warming movement. You're going to hurt, you know, all this other stuff. I mean, Gore is a, you know, first rate creep. And, you know, of course, he's getting a ton of bad you know, press on the internet's flying around everywhere, all this stuff's going on. Pretty soon he's going to wish he hadn't invented the internet. Except, of course, you know, but if he didn't invent it, he could go on J-Date and uh, meet Larry David's wife. So, I mean, he's, he's got to be torn on this whole issue. <laughs> 
Oh, oh man. Lord. He's awful. Uh, well, speaking of another favorite guy of yours, and certainly mine, uh, Elliot yeah. Spitzer. Yeah. So you said he was going to get his own show on CNN, and yeah. by golly, by golly, yeah, he, he has. Got it, he got it, by gosh. I What's heard. wrong with me? Why can't I catch the way? Well, you got to hire hookers. You've got to be a Democrat. You've got to have liberal views. I mean, you're like the worst case. You're Southern. They're going to make fun of you. You're, you're, you stand on your values. They don't like that. Your values aren't their values. And you don't, you don't, you don't frolic with hookers. You've got to, you got to get a little, little bit of an edge to you. How you do you, how did, how does that pair up with Kathleen Parker, though? I mean, she's a conservative. I mean, she's one of these real hard conservatives. They're trying and to get Combs by different sexes. Is yeah, this a Hannity and Combs show. I think so. I think the notion is CNN ratings are in the tank. I do a lot of CNN. I like the folks down there, but they, they're struggling for identity right now. Yeah. No doubt about it. It's Kathleen Parker. You know, I'm not really sure what she did. She's a pretty hard conservative. I think she outlawed dancing in a small town once or something. I don't know what, what her credentials are in terms of conservative credentials. But Patrick Swayze. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but they're going to put her on there. And people watch for a little while. You know, they'll see, they'll watch for a little while until they realize that, you know, that Spitzer's not arguing about price. <laughs> they're just talking about <laughs> issues. And they'll probably fade away like everything else. I mean, who knows? Uh, uh, you know, Spencer, they, you know, not a bad guy to have on there. The, you know, if you got someone who knows get, how to get the most value out of an hour, it's probably him. <laughs> really, and how to hide from uh, law enforcement officers and and not get caught. Yeah, and how uh, to type of thing. You know, me. We were talking about earlier, off air. It's gotten to where you got to be either a train wreck to get a reality show, or tremendously boring to be, you know, on certain TV shows. I mean, there's there's, there's not a lot of room for substance anymore. It has right. to be. You have to do something kind of odd, snooky on Jersey Shore, I mean, look, Paris Hilton, these people occupy Google and, and all the searches. I was looking at the Google search today. I didn't recognize half the people in the Google search. Most of them were just, you know, DUIs or uh, drug situations or, you know, Jesse James and Sandra Bullock make all the, you know, make all the news, you know, et cetera. So, so that, that says more about us than it does about them, though, doesn't it? Well, it says. It allowed us to elect a bad president, and it also makes us not pay attention to politics because we're diverted by this you know, shiny notion of, of, of stardom and debut uh, celebrities and all these different people. They're personal train wrecks. It may make people feel better about their own lives, perhaps. I, I don't know what it is. It's a diversion, or it just speaks to the, the lack of IQ and, and interest the Amer American people have actually in facts and politics and what's really going on. When we come back, I want to talk to you about where has Hollywood been during this oil well gusher. Ron Hart, we'll be right back. <laughs> 